professor of engineering and aviation science from the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, and he's going to provide remarks to you. Good afternoon. I take it that you've heard everything that needed to be said about getting into an engineering career. What is your vision as a high school student at this point? That's the question you want to ask yourself. Five, ten years from now, after you're out of college, what do you see yourself doing? Just because you're going into engineering field does not necessarily mean that you're going to live in engineering. You've had some of them who are managers here, and you've seen some of them with diverse backgrounds. The key is to have a passion for something, without which failure is the same thing as success. It might sound paradoxical to you, but if you're not happy and you have a degree in a job, the money will not satisfy you because the agony is more than the pay. But if you have an understanding of what you need to succeed, three questions. What do I want to become? What skills do I need? How do I fit into the global society? That's the part that many people don't put in any thought about. The global society has shrunk from the days that we know it. As an engineer, you may be asked to work in foreign countries where cultural differences form the basis of your understanding exactly what it is you are there for. The example I like to give some of you here is Boeing 7777. The internal design of that plane took approximately a year and a half of consultation with several cultures around the world to understand their myths, their taboos, and the way they perceive things. You are now in a global village. Did you all see the joke about uh, President Bush when he had the Texas horn? And that was actually a curse in um, Turkey. These are things that you, will, you may not take seriously. But if you're taking to, if you're representing a firm and you're in Japan, for example, they expect you to take your shoes off to be with them. It's a cultural change. Understanding the environment in which you operate is key to success. These are not all the skills that you are going to acquire from your university. So if you are interested in engineering, part of what you do is liberalize yourself. Delve into other cultural activities. Volunteer in areas where your technical skill is not what is most important, but your ability to what? Communicate among society. These are prominent skills that the textbooks will not teach you. Okay, and when you are able to understand these differences, your patience and level of comprehension is widened by it. When you lack these skills, you are not able to communicate with a greater culture. Let's look at the aviation industry right now. Where do you think the greatest traffic is going to come from? It's got to be from Far East. They have the greatest population. If you're dealing with that culture and you don't understand that culture, how do you think you're going to sell your planes? We're talking demand and supply now, right? 
One thing, if there's anything you live here with that you should understand is don't concentrate only on the engineering or technical courses. Find time to take economics, business, literature, philosophy. Be well-rounded. That will determine your success level. Grades are very important. But what is meaning? How do you define success? I have been privileged to involve myself with different cultures and different environments to have that knowledge base. But as the new generation, a group that will now be in a global village where a click is sufficient to connect you to the rest of the world, a lack of these understandings will be a source of failure to you. If we want to maintain our superiority as a leading nation in technology, there is also a need for us to diversify ourselves to understand other cultures, understand how they think. Thank you.